In today's video, I'm going to be giving you an extensive list of foods that contain zero carbs to keep you in ketosis and help you lose weight, reverse insulin resistance, and improve your metabolic health. So stick around if you wanna know more. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post new videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. The foods mentioned in this video are gonna be beneficial for anyone who is looking to lose weight, boost their brain power, reverse insulin resistance and type two diabetes, and more. And this is because when we limit carbohydrates in our diet, our bodies switch over to burning fat for energy instead a state which is known as ketosis. Insulin drops and fat burning increases. And contrary to what some people say, this state where you are burning mainly fat for energy is not dangerous. It is a normal and healthy metabolic state that humans would not have been able to get to this point without. On a very basic level, your body has two main sources of energy, glucose or carbohydrates and fat or ketones. When we eat carbohydrates, they are turned to glucose by the body and can be used for energy. This is a quick energy source as carbs are broken down relatively quickly. But the downside is, is that only a limited amount of glucose can be stored by the body, in the muscles and in our liver. So if you are relying on carbs for energy, you need to be replenishing them every few hours throughout the day. Now, if your body didn't have a backup energy source, if these stores depleted, you would die. And that is where ketones and ketosis come in. When your body senses your glucose stores are low, your liver starts making ketones from fat. And ketones are another energy source. And unlike glucose, where your body can only store a limited amount, around 2000 calories worth, your body can store much more energy as fat. Even someone who is very lean can have over 100,000 calories worth of energy stored as fat. And of course, if you have more stored fat, then you have even more stored energy. Generally, you need to consume less than 50 grams of total carbohydrates in a day in order to reach ketosis. But this number can be higher or lower depending on how active you are, your current metabolic health, and other factors. So if you're trying to keep your carbs below 50 grams in a day, it can be really helpful to know which foods contain zero of them. Hence the point of today's video. So let's get into it. We're gonna start off with meat and seafood. Now, I'm calling this a zero carb list, which it is, but some foods I'm gonna mention do contain trace amounts of carbs, but not enough to matter in any capacity. One egg, for example, I would call it a zero carb food, but it does contain 0.5 grams of carbohydrates. Honestly, such a low amount though, it would be silly to not include eggs on this list. Anyways, I just wanted to make this disclaimer before I get called out in the comment section. <laughs> now, meat and most seafood really are the best zero carb foods, but you do need to be careful of anything that is pre-marinated or contains any seasoning or sauces or anything like that because these can contain sugar and carbs. Maybe not enough to matter, but still something to be mindful of. Zero carb meat includes beef, chicken, pork, turkey, lamb, mutton, bison, goat, duck, rabbit, deer, bacon, quail, goose, and kangaroo. And then for seafood, we have salmon, sardines, mackerel, halibut, tuna, shrimp, whiting, crab, lobster, cod, trout, bass, anchovies, and herring. Now, before we continue with the list, I'm just going to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to build a website, maybe for a new business or for personal use, Squarespace is hands down the best option on the market. It is super user-friendly. Designing and building your website could not be more simple. And the best part is that Squarespace does so much more. 
You can also build an email list and send out email campaigns, build an online store and accept payments, add bookings to your website, and so much more, all on one platform. If you wanna check out Squarespace, you can head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start a free trial. You don't have to enter your credit card details or anything to get started. And once you love it and decide to launch, make sure to use code healthcoachkate to save 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Next up, let's talk cheese. Now, different cheeses can vary greatly in their carbohydrate content. In general, fresh, soft cheeses are going to be higher in carbs, and aged hard cheeses are going to be lower. One cup of cottage cheese, for example, contains seven grams of carbohydrates, whereas Parmesan has less than a gram of carbs in a 15 gram serve. And I get that these aren't really comparable portion sizes, but most people aren't gonna be eating a full bowl of Parmesan cheese, <laughs> I hope not at least. So hopefully you get my point. <laughs> now there are exceptions to the soft and hard cheese rule, however. Soft cheeses such as brie, which are aged, are an example of this. But anyways, I probably made this more confusing than it needed to be. <laughs> Some of the cheeses that contain close to zero grams of carbs include blue cheese, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella, gouda, feta, cheddar cheese, cream cheese, buffalo mozzarella, goat's cheese, camembert, Monterey Jack, Colby Jack, Swiss, provolone, brie, and halloumi. Some other animal products that are zero carb or very close to zero carb <laughs> include chicken eggs, duck eggs, fish eggs, beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, fish bone broth, cod liver, and cod liver oil. And now we're gonna get into vegetables and fruit. And here's the thing, it is truly impossible for these foods to be zero carb. They are always gonna contain at least a small amount. So on this list, I've included foods that are as close to zero carb as possible. These are the lowest carb vegetables and fruits you can find. For vegetables, bok choy, arugula, asparagus, iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, butter lettuce, pickles, Swiss chard, celery, cucumber, and cabbage. And with fruits, it's actually a lot trickier because Fruits do contain more sugar, which is a type of carbohydrate. The best low carb ones I would recommend are avocados, olives, and coconut. These fruits are high in fat and lower in carbs, but again, they're not zero carb. <laughs> and when we talk about nuts and seeds, the same applies. But these are the ones that are closest to zero with less than five grams per serve. Macadamias, almonds, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, hemp seeds, walnuts, sesame seeds, pecans, peanuts, chia seeds, peanut butter, almond butter, macadamia butter, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, and sesame seeds. And finally, we're gonna finish off by talking about fats and oils. And because these foods are quite literally isolated fat, they do only contain trace amounts of protein and, if any, carbohydrates. The best ones you can use for cooking include beef tallow, bison tallow, ghee, coconut oil, palm oil, duck fat, chicken fat, and bacon grease. Now olive oil and avocado oil are also good, but you only wanna use these for low temperature cooking or consume them fresh. I have a whole video on why you don't want to heat these oils too much these oils meaning avocado and olive, which I just mentioned at the end, which I'll link above. It's the same reason that you don't wanna use vegetable oils for cooking at all. Vegetable oils are extremely fragile. They oxidize really easily, AKA they go rancid as soon as they are heated or exposed to any oxygen or light. In most cases, this occurs with vegetable oils during the processing, which is why they are stripped of their color and their taste. They are already rancid when you buy them. So you want to avoid vegetable oils full stop, but the same oxidation will happen if you heat all of an avocado oil too much. I just wanna make a quick note that smoke point and the point that an oil oxidizes are not the same. So I know avocado oil is often recommended for high temperature cooking, but don't do it. Only use it for low temperature or fresh. And use fats that are solid at room temperature, 
for high temperature cooking instead. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comment section down below what your number one favorite food on this list was. I love hearing from you guys and chatting with you down there. So even if you want to just come say hi. I love chatting with you, as I just said. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on three steps to get into ketosis fast. You can check that out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my coaching programs, including my seven day keto start program and my insulin resistance masterclass, you can find those here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.